And this is the Minnesota Score Basketball Show. Wally Langfellow along with the coach, Larry McKenzie. Welcome to our final show of the season. Uh, state tournament is in the books. Coach, I know it didn't turn out exactly how you would want it, but your club made a nice run. You got through the quarters and semis. Um, both good basketball games, by the way. And the championship just uh, ran out of gas against a very good Annandale team. A very good team. I mean, we, we, I mean, you win 29 in a row, right? <laughs> that that says a lot. Um, very prepared. And, and Annandale beat, you know, I mean, obviously we thought we would be playing Caledonia. Right all year long. Everybody thought that that would be the matchup. And so, you know, it was a veteran group of kids and obviously uh, really, really prepared. Uh, Coach Skip Dolan did a fantastic job uh, with those kids. And those kids had a taste of it over the years. They had gotten there, never really been able to get over the hump. And they decided, you know, this is our last we ride at it. And uh, they came out and did what they had to do. Uh, how did your kids handle it? Because I know you have a big group of seniors as well. In a similar situation, kids that had, you know, hadn't really gotten that championship feel. Yeah, so our kids were disappointed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, all year long, that was our goal. We worked toward, you know, uh, it did sting us a little bit. And so, uh, but, but, you know, we just talk about, I mean, it, it's a game. It was, a, you know, something that we wanted to do. It was a goal that the, did not get accomplished, but you know, you're 18 years old, you got so much life ahead of mm. you. Let's, uh, let's learn from it, keep moving on to bigger and better things. Yeah. All right, uh, let's take a look at what happened at the state tournament over the weekend on Saturday, the championship games. We'll start with the Class 4A. Uh, the Park Center Pirates get their championship. Uh, they defeat the defending state champions of Wyzetta. They beat them 58 to 53. And they get Cody Pennebaker, comes up with 23 points. Um, and he turned out to be really the difference maker, both at the offensive end and, and both the defensive end. Yeah, I, I thought all year long, I mean, obviously we played them earlier, that, that he was just that guy, right, who uh, had the ability uh, to do that. So we want to say congratulations and hats off to uh, Coach John, James Ware in terms of doing an outstanding job and getting that ship. Yes, yeah, so sir. they got the championship. Park Center beats Wyzetta, denies them the repeat championship. But Wyzetta, I got to tell you, that semifinal game that they played on Thursday night, um, the play by Hayden Tibbetts in the second half of that game was outstanding. 21 second half points that literally led them to the championship game. Well, I saw that out close and in person Ooh. because that's the same type of game he had against us when we played him. Uh, right in, you know, late uh, in the season, February, yeah. early March, yeah, during the late part of the season. He took over the second half. Yeah, and he's only a junior, so yeah. <laughs> don't be surprised to see them back next year. Uh, class 3A, Totino beats De La Salle. Uh, Taysan Chapman with 15 points in Totino's win. Class 2A, of course, was your game. Um, you got points from the guys that you normally get points from, Miko Anderson and Willie Wilson, but as you said, uh, just not enough uh, yeah. against a very good Annandale. So, again, not making an excuse. You know, I was missing my best defender, Zayshon Wright, who got hurt, uh, broke his hand in the quarterfinals, made a major difference for me in terms of the rotation. And then my team, like, like much like Annandale, got the, you, I had to have the big three. And uh, Jacob Butler, you know, why he did a great job on the boards, he didn't, you know, we didn't get enough offense from him right. that night. And I think that was part of uh, different. And, and not because... And they'll play great defense. I mean, they went into that zone, and we just wasn't able to make shots. Right. Yeah, that zone defense, I thought, uh, was a game changer for them. And then finally, uh, in Class A, it was Hayfield repeating as champions, and they beat uh, Belgrade, Bruton, El Rosa 50-49. to So those are your four champions for 2022. We're going to take a break now. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to several people, including uh, Coach Skip Dolan, yeah. who was on the other sideline. Uh, in that championship game. That and more coming up here on the Minnesota Score Basketball Show. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Larry McKenzie, head coach of Minneapolis North Boys Basketball. And when you're building a championship program, there are many components and many levels to that. One of the most important things is trust. And so when I think about cars, when I think about my grandbabies driving around, when I think about family, friends, or my former player, I go to this guy, David Jones. Shakopee Chevrolet, this is the man that I trust. Hi, I'm David Jones, Special Finance Manager here at Shakopee Chevrolet. Go online right now and get your guaranteed credit approval at www.shakopeechevrolet.com 
slash David Jones. And welcome back to the Minnesota Score Basketball Show. Wally Lang follow along with the coach, Larry McKenzie. And coach, as you looked over to the other sideline in Saturday's game, you saw Skip Dolan, whose club has made several trips to the state tournament, but never got to the top of the mountain, but they were able to do it against your club. Let's bring Coach Dolan on right now. Coach, uh, first of all, congratulations. I know it's uh, a great achievement for your program and for the school and for the community. Um, as you look back on Saturday, what sticks out in your mind the most? Well, you know, just the challenge that laid out ahead of us and that, and, and I went over right away and, and talked to Larry about, you know, um, the appreciation I had for him and his program and what he stood for and, and the type of young men he was trying to, to raise and then let alone the quality um, basketball players that he was going to put on the floor. That So that was where the challenge was. Coach, congratulations again, and uh, just want to say, I mean, again, hats off to you, and one of the things that I always talk about this year, and as you said, I mean, I, I knew the challenge for us is, you know, I always respect programs, and, you know, I've seen over the years, you know, you getting those kids prepared, and uh, I just want you to know, I think, outstanding job, I mean, you know, uh, you, you, you stop uh, Eli King, uh, in the night before in the semifinals, and uh, I just thought you guys did a, a, were really well prepared uh, going into the championship game, and did, and did a good job of uh, you know uh, keeping our guys from putting the ball in the basket. You know, thanks, Coach. Uh, you know, we I think the thing that we will live with our whole life is we didn't go through you know the back door in this that we took. <laughs> You know, Caledonia straight on with Eli and, and took on, the, you know, the consistently best program in the in the state of Minnesota uh, in, in your polars. Um, we just felt against both those teams. I think the one the one good us is both those teams were going to were going to get after us and, and trap us and and try to force us into turnovers. And we just felt if we controlled the turnover battle battle, um, we really I really liked my kids as far as in a, in a half court set, because, as you know, we got some pretty good size up front and we got only they got good size but they can jump jump well so athletically they can match you know some of the some of your guys as players and stuff so uh, that was our biggest thing was we were the floor pretty well and then just hopefully we could stay out of those traps and if you did come on your traps we were going to try to attack it and, and we had just enough enough success to to, to walk away with the win. Coach, I, th I think you also, I mean, when I looked at your roster, you had a, you know, one of the things we talked about all year, we had a veteran group, uh, you know, most seniors that I've ever had on a team this year was seven. You also had a number of, uh, of, of seniors. How important was it to have, you know, that veteran leadership and guys uh, with experience, right, who have uh, been to the state tournament before, and, and even though you had not gotten into the championship game, it wasn't something new for your team and your program. How important was those seniors and their leadership? Yeah, I mean, technically our top eight kids were all seniors, and not only were they all seniors, but they all played football together on a really good football program, and then they played in the basketball, and they grew up, you know, the younger grades always playing together, um, the whole group. And so to have that kind of mentality where, you know, as you know, Coach, you know, that senior – thing gives you a little edge it gives you a little edge to you know not wanting to be their last game and 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 not looking forward to whatever next year might bring and so we had that type of seniors um you know the hawk and millers types the brady spaulding types and that you know my two little guards were five eight but went back down to anybody um we just had those kinds of those kinds of kids that you know you were gonna you have to have to beat us and then it didn't matter the stars weren't too big for these seniors Seniors. They just they just knew what was in front of them and they went after it. And coach, you had a huge night from Ganyan on Friday night in the semifinals. And Saturday he wasn't as big of a factor, but boy, you sure your team sure was balanced. I, I was very impressed with the balance that your club had with uh, with Miller and with Spalding and with Ganyan. Uh, and you can go right down the list. You know, your five or six guys just uh, really spread the wealth. I thought. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and the best part was is um, Carson Ganyu just he's so unselfish. It's he's a coach's son, um, and he just 
he's all about winning and all about just taking the next step. And he was just as happy to lock somebody down as to, um, you know, have to score points in that. So he's a very patient basketball player and he needs to get that success. But I think we had probably, you know, 12, 13 times where all five senior, all five starters scored in double figures. And that this year, um, you really, nobody could come out and say, oh, we're going to run a box of one on Ganyu or we're going to do something like that. And then we just had too many weapons and too many threats. So, yeah, that makes us more universal. There's no doubt about it. Well, Coach, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Um, and, again, congratulations on winning that uh, first state championship for Ann and Dale. I know it's a special time for you and for your program. Yeah, it really was. Our community was alive for the last basically 24 hours and stuff. And um, and again, thanks to you guys for, for following up on high school sports and the coverage. It's just what, you know, makes uh, high school sports so special is because we can get some positive coverage like this. Yeah. Well, again, congratulations, Coach, and uh, uh, enjoy it, Coach. It's uh, it's not an easy thing to, to accomplish as you you well know, so really uh, take time to, to celebrate uh, your hard work and the success of your team. You know, it, it's, it's really a special moment. So congratulations. Hey, thanks, Larry. That's coming from a class act, man. So thank you very much. Believe me, I, maybe I've been enjoying it too long because I think I'm taking a nap as soon as this baby's over. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. He has skipped all. And by the way, their team won 29 straight games to win that championship. Not an easy task. Larry and I will be back with more here on the Minnesota Score Basketball Show after this timeout. Hi, I'm Larry McKenzie, head coach of Minneapolis North Boys Basketball. And when you're building a championship program, there are many components and many levels to that. One of the most important things is trust. And so when I think about cars, when I think about my grandbabies driving around, when I think about family, friends, or my former player, I go to this guy, David Jones, Shakopee Chevrolet. This is the man that I trust. Hi, I'm David Jones, special finance manager here at Shakopee Chevrolet. Go online right now and get your guaranteed credit approval at www.shakopeechevrolet.com slash David Jones. Welcome back. Minnesota Score Basketball Show. And Coach, uh, one of the guys that we have talked to over the years that really works this high school basketball beat is our friend Jim Paulson from the Star Tribune, he does a great job covering the high school basketball beat. And, of course, he was at the state tournament. Jim joins us now. Uh, Jim, first and foremost, your impressions of the uh, Park Center Wyzetta game, which I thought turned out to be a pretty good basketball game. Well, I agree with you. I think it started off a little different than I think we all anticipated. We expected uh, uh, Park Center to be the team that would be uh, pushing the tempo and getting it uh, up and down the court a little bit. And uh, why is that maybe hitting the three-pointers? It turned out exactly the opposite. Um, Park Center hit the six three-pointers in the first half. That, that kind of helped them uh, recover from uh, a, not a real good shooting first half. And Wyzetta was the team with the motion offense with a lot of cutting and screening and passing, and they kept it close that way. But in the end, it was just uh, too much Park Center, too much talent, too much length, and a team that was really set up to win at this time of year. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree. I think one of the things is uh, it was interesting enough, I think, when if anybody kind of look at the stats, uh, a lot of the teams struggled, you know, shooting uh, at the baskets at, at, at Williams Arena. Mm. Um, so I guess I'd be curious, Jim, I mean, you saw most of the games and, and you were very familiar with the, a lot of the teams. It, it, was that just me, or was that something that others saw? You know, because I was surprised. I mean, uh, and particularly with Wyzetta, right, as a, as one of the better shooting teams and uh, a few other teams that shot the ball uh, particularly well during the course of the season that just couldn't put it in, uh, including us, that couldn't put it in the basket at Williams Arena. It made me wonder a little bit if it was more about the circumstances than the arena. I know that I've heard an awful lot of complaints about Target Center over the years because that deep background they have there. Um, sometimes that court makes it more difficult. And that the intimacy of Williams Arena um, adds to the uh, ability of, of kids to play, and, and they kind of like playing there. I saw the same thing. I saw a lot of games where 
teams were not shooting as well as they could have in that uh, Park Center game in particular. Part of the reason for YZ, for example, or Park Center, for example, was um, they were really collapsing on Braden Carrington. Anytime he got the ball, they were making sure they had uh, two and three men around him and not giving him any easy looks. But with Park Center, they had so much depth. They leaned on a couple yeah. of their uh, their role players, and uh, they carried them. Uh, uh, Cody Panabaker and Ayuba Bertha um, each had the three three-pointers in the first half. And when your big guns aren't going, and there you can say that. I'm sure you can agree. It's nice to have those other guys that can pick them up a little bit. Absolutely. Jim, I'm, I'm curious, and, and, and before Wally gets to it, you know, Wally's always uh, talking about the seeding for Class 4A. I honestly thought that this year uh, that even the quarterfinal games were much better than any of us anticipated. Uh, just want to get your thoughts in terms of the teams that actually made it to the tournament. I thought it was a lot more, and we're just talking 4A, was a lot more competitive because I know Wally's going to talk about the seeding of the tournament. Except for one game, one noted game, Wyzett and Moorhead, was as ugly as it yeah. ever will get. Um, but go ahead, yeah, Jim. Uh, I missed that more, one. More <laughs> 71 to 28, by the way. <laughs> I think Morehead was a six seed in that section, too, weren't they? So that you kind of expect it when you see upsets coming through like that. But I, I thought it was uh, an awful lot of real balance in this year's tournament. Uh, Larry, I, could, I couldn't disagree with you there. Um, but in, in the end, it just looked like the, the talent won out, and uh, Park Center was clearly the most talented team in the tournament this year. A couple of additions this year that really made a difference. Cody Pennebaker, who was at St. Francis last year, and uh, Cash Chavis, who uh, was with Brooklyn Park or uh, uh, Brooklyn Center a couple of years ago, started the season at De La Salle and uh, uh, ended up, I think, uh, Park Center is his home school, and he ended up playing there, and he was a difference maker. So the, the talent, I think, at Park Center, and James Ware really stressed to his team and what he'd gone through when he lost in a state championship game in 94 with Hopkins. And the players said they'd heard that story all year long. And I think that probably paid off a little bit too in terms of making sure that you're ready and prepared for the game. And you're doing the little things that when you're not shooting, other things that can make a difference. Yeah, and I thought Pennebaker, not only did he shoot well, but he had two or three key steals yes. during that second half that I thought turned that game. It was you know, a two, three-point game. It turned into a, you know, eight, ten-point game that Wyzetta eventually fought back from. But I thought that he was key in both on the defensive end and on the offensive end. And I think that's a yeah. role that he's played for them all year long. One of the things I like about him, he seems to be a high-energy guy, right? He always make that one play at the right time to kind of get that team going on, on both sides of the ball. And, and to, to Jim's point, I mean – you know, Park Center got better uh, with, with uh, you know, with Cash coming in uh, after, the, after the half point of the year. I mean, you know, I mean, you got one of the better players in the state. How does that happen? I, I, I mean, that's more of a question for Jim than myself. How does that happen, Jim? <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've, I've stopped questioning these things a long time ago. I, at my, my philosophy is now if it's within the high school league rules, they agree, they're fine with it. I'm not going to do a question. We get a lot of emails from people. I'm sure you hear a lot of questions asking the same thing, but I'm sure it was uh, it was uh, fine by whatever the high school league uh, uh, rules and how they uh, dictate those sorts of things. And uh, you know, I, I, it turned out well for uh, for Park Center. This kid can get to the basket. He can break down defense as well as anybody in the tournament. I thought. Um, all right, last question for you. Your impressions of the 4A tournament overall? Larry mentioned, you know, the how equal at least. Three of the four um, quarterfinal games were um, the two semifinal games were relatively close, although Park Center, you know, really was clearly a better team than Eastview. But your your general impressions of the the field this year in 4A? Well, I think there was definitely a favorite in Park Center, obviously, but the other teams I thought really showed up well for themselves. I mean, I, I think uh, we didn't get a chance to really see how good Oatana was, and I know Oatana was a very good team. Um, because Creighton was playing their best at this time of year. And Jerry Klein really gets that team ready to go at the end of the year. Obviously, they had to, they started the season a little bit slow, but Creighton was playing well. Eastview was uh, another team that was peaking at the right time. Um, and, and you know, Andover is a better team than I think anybody gave him credit for because that's a team that can shoot three-pointers. So um, there was a lot of good quality basketball in the Class uh, 4A tournament. But Creighton, Creighton rises to the top, and that's what you saw with Park Center. They were just... Uh, uh, the best team in the tournament by far, I thought. Yeah. I got one last question for you, Jim, and I, and I don't know, so maybe you can confirm, but 
You know, your thoughts about the third place game. I heard that there was a team that uh, didn't, you know, I mean, guys just didn't show up to play in that game. Uh, what impact, if any, do you think that I have on future consolation brackets? You know, that's a good point. I've heard a lot of people wonder why they have consolation brackets in these tournaments. But I know that every time I talk to a coach, they at, at, particularly after losing a semifinal game or after losing a, one of the rounds, they all refer to the fact that we've got one more game or two more games or a chance to stay together and be a team. And I think that's where their priorities lie. I mean, winning and losing matters. You can't deny that. But to a lot of these coaches, a lot of these teams, and maybe there you could confirm this, being together with the guys, being together with your teammates, having one or two more chances um, to play together and possibly get that taste out of your mouth after losing an important game uh, seems to be very important to coaches. And I, I, I'm, I'm kind of in favor of thinking that, that, I like that there's a consolation bracket. Now, some kids don't show up to play or some kids uh, aren't ready to go. I don't know what you can do about that. I think that's that 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 probably just happens at that particular time. But from uh, an overall standpoint, I think the most coaches seem to be in favor of having those extra games. Um, I'd, I'd like to see what you think on that, Larry. No, I mean, I mean I, I, again, I mean, I have last year when we would have – had an opportunity to play in a third place game. I mean, I want to get as many games in as I can. So <laughs> for me, you know, given that opportunity, like you say, and particularly for the young guys, if you guys got guys coming back, it's it's a good way to finish the season, right? Uh, in, a, in a positive way going mm -hmm. into to next season. So absolutely yeah. in favor. Well, Jim, we appreciate your time with us. Uh, and I'm sure we'll see you back out on that prep beat again. Your stuff can be found <coughs> at StarTribune.com, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, Wally, Larry, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jim. Jim Paulson from the Star Tribune. All right, Coach, uh, next up, we're going to shift right to Shea Field. He is one of the assistant coaches for James Ware over at Park Center and uh, a championship in his uh, resume now as the uh, Park Center Pirates, as we just talked about with Jim Paulson. Jay, welcome to the show. Uh, congratulations. Good win for you guys on Saturday night. Good run through the season. Yeah, welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, all right. What was the difference on Saturday night against YZ? Because they put, they put the heat on you guys at, at the end, for sure. But what was the difference, did you think, in that basketball game? Um, for us, it was all about defense. And one thing that Coach Ware put a lot of emphasis on throughout the entire state tournament was that if we don't score, the other team cannot score as well. So we always knew, um, especially in transition, a big focus for ours was to get stops, always get stops. We spent a lot of time watching video, film. As we were preparing for the state tournament, one team that we actually spent a lot of time working on throughout the entire way was why is that up Shay, for you uh from an assistant coach lens what, at what point during the season would you say was a defining moment uh for this team in terms of you know knowing that you had uh, a special group before the season started and honestly the reason why i say that is just because when we lost that section final game last year, um, this team turned around 24 hours later and was back in the gym. Um, as a state tournament was going on, we knew that teams were allowed to practice up through a certain um, day in the, the, the calendar year. So we took advantage of that opportunity. So while Creed and YZ was playing the state championship, our team was lifting weights, um, getting ready for what was going to happen in the next season. So we spent a lot of time in the off season preparing for what was going to come and what was next. And we knew that championships weren't built during the season. We knew that they're built in the off season. Shay, for, for the folks that are listening, talk a little bit about, um, obviously I know the importance of the role of, of assistant coaches in terms of preparation. Share with the, our <clears throat> audience uh, just what, what do you do as an assistant coach and what role do, do you play in making sure the team is prepared uh, for these opportunities of, of being a state championship team? I would say my role is a lot around um, player development as well as um, academics, nutrition, um, being a good mentor. And what I mean by that was in the offseason, um, a player, key player for us was James Spencer. 
me and James Spencer spent a lot of time talking about nutrition, kind of what he needs to do to his body, how big his role was for the team. So for the whole month of June, James Spencer um, changed his diet before he went to Arizona. I challenged him to go run 25 miles in a week. Um, and that month, I think James lost 15 to 20 pounds. Two months later, James is down 25, 30 pounds, um, which which was a, a huge, huge um, opportunity for us considering how big of a role James played. Last question for you. Um, Braden Carrington headed to the University of Minnesota next year. Um, how were you able to keep him focused on the task at hand this year, knowing that he's got that gopher um, you know, career ahead of him and, and it happened early on this year? College coaches want winners. It's not about the stats. Co coaches want to make sure you can get things done at the next level. And if you can't win, um, this goes back to a couple years ago, Frank McCaffrey was in our gym. And the story he told our guys in open gym was, when I go recruit players, I watch in open gym. And if you can't win an open gym, how do you think you can help me win in the Big Ten? If you can't help mm -hmm. your high school team win in their conference, how can you help me win down the stretch in March? So Braden knew from the jump that it was all about winning and that if Braden wanted to make it to the next level, regardless of the stats, he had to win. So his main focus always was to make sure, you know, our team was going to win. And Braden was the first kid to show up to everything every single day. If we had practice at four o'clock, Braden's at school at 2.45, making sure his rehab is done, making sure his body's right um, before we hit the floor and then take care of his body afterwards. So Braden understood what it takes to be a winner and he achieved that. Well, congratulations once again to you and uh, to the entire Park Center Pirate uh, Ball Club, and uh, good luck again. Maybe we'll see you back here next year. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. He is Shea Fields, assistant coach with the Park Center Pirates, right here on the Minnesota Basketball Show. Stay with us. More after this time off. Hi, I'm Louie McKenzie, head coach of Minneapolis North Boys Basketball. And when you're building a championship program, there are many components and many levels to that. One of the most important things is trust. And so when I think about cars, when I think about my grandbabies driving around, when I think about family, friends, or my former player, I go to this guy, David Jones, Shakopee Chevrolet. This is the man that I trust. Hi, I'm David Jones, Special Finance Manager here at Shakopee Chevrolet. Go online right now and get your guaranteed credit approval at www.shakopeechevrolet.com slash David Jones. Final segment of our final show of the season, the Minnesota Score Basketball Show, brought to you by David Jones at Shakopee Chevrolet. Uh, Coach, we talked a little bit about it with Jim Paulson a little earlier in the show. Playing at Williams Arena... Uh, give me your insight on if you think it should be there permanently. Because well, I, really, well, I, I, I like mean, that. I, I prefer Williams Arena. I mean, you know, kids love to play at Target Center because that's the pros. But I love that venue. Uh, and I would ask or uh, say to the high school league, they should give strong consideration at, at keeping the tournament at Williams Arena. What do you like about that? Well, I mean, one is it's just a bond. I mean, it's the feel, the flavor of, of that arena. The the, the raised history. floor, the history, all of that stuff. And it's it, until recently the only Division One program in the state and for kids to have that opportunity in that historic arena to, to play for a championship. I just thought it was – I loved it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it's a great place for high school basketball and for the championship game. And it's more intimate, too. Yeah. I think that that's really important. So, um, But, yeah, I, I thought that we had some pretty good basketball – uh, some good championship games, and uh, we crowned some new champions this year. So, with the exception of Hayfield, they are the repeat champions in Class A. All right, well, that'll wrap up the show. Coach, uh, I thought it went well, and we look forward to next season. Looking forward to next season. And, again, thank you, David Jones and Shakopee Chevrolet. Yeah, they are our main sponsors here on the Minnesota Score Basketball. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.